thoughts on RMF analysis with Power BI. So if you have any questions during the presentation, you can drop it in the chat box and periodically I'll read out the questions that will answer your questions. So um, the Power BI Learning community is sponsored by Enter, Enter, uh, Enterprise DNA and is powered by your BizEdge. So um, Enterprise DNA is a is an um, educational, so it's a platform where you can learn about mostly about Power BI and Power Platform. So there, of course, is the self undergoing at the moment. You have a data challenge which is undergoing, which you can take part. That will be ending in two weeks and two weeks time. So you can take part in the data challenge, or you can you should visit that site and go over the courses. So it's also the Power BI learning community is also powered by your business, and your business is also a registered Microsoft and financial modeling and data analysis enterprise solution firm in Nigeria. And there also have courses undergoing at the moment. So there are courses in Power BI, in Excel, in big data analysis and financial model. So today about our guest speaker. So our guest speaker is Bicola. And Bicola is an alumni of the Microsoft Lean Data Analysis Squared. She currently works at uh, Rainbow Business Solutions as a data, as I should say, data consultant. She's also a Microsoft certified data analyst and a certified Microsoft as well fundamental and data for enjoys watching movies and her favorite also are Dan Brown. So without any further ado, we'll be called out take us on to this topic. Hi, thank you, Fai. Okay, so as Ifani has mentioned, my name is Bukola. My full name is Olubukola Akinshola. Um, I'm supposed to tell you about my journey into data analysis. Just a brief of my journey. I started in 2020. Oh. Okay, so the, I hope you can the, hear me. Yeah, so the journey of Udo is maybe at the end of the session. After, oh, at the end. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, at the end of the session, yes. Right. Okay, so let's just dive so, in. Into, so today we'll be talking about, I'll share my screen now. Okay. Let me know when you can see my screen. Okay. Yes, it's visible. Okay, so um, I'll be talking about RFM analysis with Power BI. Okay. RFM is one of the customer segmentation techniques that is used by marketing professionals um, to segment their customer and it is actually a great method to identify groups of customers for special treatment and it is used mainly to improve marketing. Um, so, can you just give me like a second? Mm -hmm. No problem. Okay. Yeah. So, that's fine. So um, RFM stands for recency, frequency, and monetary value. Recency refers to the last purchase date of a particular time period. Um, the frequency is the number of time a customer has made a purchase during this particular time period. And monetary is the monetary value of the purchase made by a customer during this particular time period. The thing about RFM is that when you are doing this analysis, you are doing it within a particular time period. So if you have a data set and you want to do it for all of the time period on your data set, you can do it just for it's very is a very time um is a time analysis that has to do with time. It is useful to generate a high rate of response. Um, plus an increase in customer um, time value. There are different parameters that are required when you are doing your RFM analysis. Please, if I'm too fast, you can just let me know so I can slow down. So there are different parameters that is required. The first is to identify the customers. Um, so if you have a data set, what identifies your customer in your data set? Do you have a customer ID? Do you have customer name? Is it the email address you're using to identify the customer? So whatever you're using to identify the customer, it is very important that you take notes of it when you're doing your RFM analysis. Then also you identify the monetary value. And the monetary value is the total amount of what the customer has spent across, across all of their transactions. 
So in RFM analysis, it is usually used mainly for sales data. So if you have a data that deals with how customers buy from your shop, from your store, from your business, a sales data of that, you can use RFM analysis to analyze the customer's behavior. For the um, recency, the recency is it deals with the amount of time a customer has bought, like the most recent transaction the customer has made in your store. So if, for example, you are doing an RFM analysis since 2015 till now, the most recent transaction time is now, as at 18.08, like when 6.09 well, 6, 6 p.m. So the most recent transaction is 6.09 p.m. So that is the recency. For the frequency of purchase, it talks about the total number of transactions that the customer has purchased. It's very important to note that all of this is um, conducted during a specified time period. Um, so, for uh, so there's one thing about RFM analysis: you you just don't um, try to group your customer based on their recency, frequency, and monetary. There's a way they group them. There's an RFM score that helps you group your customer into different segments. The segment that you group your customer into is very dependent on your company. However, your company wants to group your clients, you can decide your RFM score for the company. I don't know if there's a general RFM um, score. I did not see a general one when I was researching, but um, I read that it is very, um, it's very important to work with your company's segments, how your companies want to segment their customer. Um, so um, I'm using. I'm using a resource from a Medium post I read from Ploy Soup Salmon. It's very useful and it is very elementary. I chose this resource because I don't know the level of advancement this class. I don't know if everybody is advanced or experienced or is just learning the beginner's level. So I try to make it as simple as possible so that we can cut across every level of proficiency here. Yeah? And so for the purpose of this class, this is the segment that I'm going to be working with. We have different segments here. We have about to sleep, at risk, cannot lose them, champions, hibernating, lost customers, loyal, need and attention, new customers, potential loyalist, and promising. So I'm going briefly through what each of these customers mean. From the name, you can tell what they mean, you can guess. So for the about to sleep, about to sleep says that it is the below average recency, frequency, and monetary values. So these customers, you will lose them if they are not reactivated. They are about to leave your company. So if you don't do something to activate them, you are going to lose this customer. We have customers that are at risk. These are the customers that spend big money and they purchase often, but uh, they've not purchased in a while and you need to bring them back. Those customers are at, least at, risk, at risk of losing them. And there are some customers that you cannot lose them. These customers have made the biggest purchase and they make these purchases often, but they haven't returned in a long time. Um, there's, a, there's a bit of difference between the cannot lose them and the at risk customers. Then we have the champions. These champions bought recently they buy often and they spend the most. We have the hibernating customers. Their last purchase was a long time ago. They are low spenders and they have low number of orders. We have lost customers. As the name implies, you've lost them. Low recency, they don't come to your, your shop. It's been long they've come to your business. They don't come often and they don't even spend much when they come. So maybe those people that are just breezing, they are just passing by your store and they just buy maybe water once in a while. Those are like the lost customers. We have loyal customers. These ones spend good amounts of money with customers. As I mentioned earlier, the loyal customers, as the name implies, they are customers that spend good money with you often and they are very responsive to your promotions. They need attention customers, they are above your recency values, your frequency value, and your monetary value, and they might not have bought very recently though, so they need attention, they need you to come and draw them back to them, to you. 
So we have new customers. New customers are those people that just come into your store for the first time and they have the potential to belong to, excuse me, any of these segments. Then we have potential loyalists. These ones are not yet loyal, but they have the potential to be loyal customers. And we have the promising customers. They are recent shoppers, but they have not spent very much. They just started coming to your shop recently, but they haven't spent a lot. Okay, so does anybody have any questions thus far? Oh, no, currently there's no questions at the moment. Okay, so let us go to our demo. I will be... So I'm assuming that everybody knows how to use Power BI here. And you can also, if you want to follow through the class, you can also do that while I am presenting. Um, so I'm going to be importing data from CSV files. So my data set, my data set is Kana data. Okay, I'm one of those people that no matter how clean the data is, I always try to transform it first. Okay, so I am removing this. Um, before I go on to do some transformations on my data set, I would like to turn off auto date and time because I want to create my own calendar table. Okay, so I can go back. So I'm going to be taking off the serial number column because I don't need it. Um, I'm going to be converting my transaction ID to text formats because I don't want it to be summed, and my customer ID also. So, so this data, um, changing this to fixed decimal number. So this is a very simple data set. We have the date of purchase, the customer ID, the transaction ID, the SKU, category, that's the product category, and the SKU, that's the product, the quantity purchased, and the sales amount. This is a pretty simple data set and straightforward data set, and it is pretty clean because I don't have any error or NT values, so I can close and apply. Um, so I want to create my calendar table. I really do hope that we are familiar with that. I don't have to go through all of the formulas. Oh, yes, I think everybody should be familiar with it. Okay. So that is really basic. Everybody. So this um, data set is between 1st of January 2016 and 31st of January 2016, but I'll just use today.
Okay, let me just create the month and then Okay, so I have my calendar table. Let me link it to my main table. Okay. So um, when you're creating, you're doing your RFM analysis, the first thing you want to do is calculate your recency. That's the R. And for you to get your recency, you need to get your last, um, so if you're working, for example, now my calendar has data for the year 2016. So let's assume we have data for 2016 to 2019. And I want to calculate the recency as at 2017. I would have to calculate my last transaction that was made in 2017. So the first thing I want to create is a formula that gives me my last transaction date. Okay, so. I first would want to create a new table because I like to put my measures on one table. So I just name it measures table. So I'm creating a new measure called my last transaction date. So I'm going to be using the max x function to get the maximum transaction date in my table. I'm going to be using the filter because I want to filter my table to get the last transaction date a customer bought something. Because my table might have a date and there's no customer information for that date. So I'm using the filter function to just filter that table to give me the last time a customer ID appeared on my maximum date. So I'm using filter. So we have that. Please, if you have any questions, I hope you can still hear me, though. Yes, I can still hear you. OK, that's fine. Just to be sure. But this last transaction date will tell you, is it the last date someone bought something? In the yes, the last date a customer bought customer something. Bought something. Yes, yeah. so that was why I could have just done use the table instead of using the filter because it's still the same thing that it would give me. But the reason why I did it is because I wanted to be specific to customer ID column. Okay. In case there's no, in case there are still dates on the date table, date on your table, and there's no customer information there. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so that's why we do that. So now the next thing is to calculate our recency value and our frequency value. So we'll create a measure for that also called recency value. So 
So our recency value is just to tell us the last time, the earliest time a customer bought a product based on the date you're working on. So now we are working, today's date is third. We want to know if a customer purchased today. If a customer purchased today, the recency value of that customer should be zero because the post customer purchased today. So that's what we want to do. So what we do is we calculate the date difference between the last transaction date, because we're using our last transaction date on our table, last time some, somebody purchased, and today's date, because it's today we are doing the analysis. Yeah, so if, for example, you are, you are not using today, you want to use as a 2017, your date difference should be last transaction date from 2017. So we're doing our last transaction date using the date difference function. Our last transaction date, that's the measure we created. And today, because we want to use today, and we are doing it by day. So that's our recency value. We also create a measure for our frequency value. A frequency value tells us how frequent a customer purchases. That's how many times a customer has come to your store. So um, I'm going to be using distinct counts to do that, so that it counts the number of times a particular customer has come to your store. So for my frequency, So I'm using transaction ID in this case because we're counting the transactions a customer have made. How many, how often does that customer buy from your store? So I'm going to be counting how many transactions a customer has made here. Yeah. So that gives me my frequency value. Let me rename it to frequency value. Then the last but not the least, is the monetary value. And monetary value is telling you how much a customer has spent in your store. For the monetary value, we're going to be using the sales amount divided by the quantity because we could just use the sales amount, but a customer can buy 5 million naira worth of goods and might just buy once. So we need to know how, how many things he bought for that 5 million naira. So that's why we're using the quantity. So we're doing sales minus quantity to get the monetary value. Okay, sorry, there's a question. Um, okay. From um, Yami, you asked a question. Yes. Okay, I, Yami, can go ahead your question. Okay, good evening. So I wanted to confirm something. Are you saying okay. that if, you know, now you're using to, I'm talking about calculating for, um, I think, recency, where you yes. use the, uh, you use the uh, maximum transaction time there on that table, right? Then yes. you, um, um, you subtracted it from the current date. Yes. You're using today. So I always saying that, and once it gives you zero, then you know that um, it's very recent. That means it occurred the same day, right? Yes, 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 yes you would know. But okay. um, with, when, we, when we go ahead, you would understand, because there's a score that each of these value that this my DAX formulas are returning that would be okay. assigning to these values. Okay, okay. Yes. So I wanted to know, why? Okay. Are, are you saying that if... Um, the last transaction um, date there was, let's say, yesterday. You know, the difference would be one, right? Yes, the difference would be one. Okay. So you are going to assign a score to it, right? Because I think yesterday, yes, I yesterday is, in reality, yesterday is still um, kind of recent. Yes, yes. It's it, it telling you like one day ago. Yes, of course. It, I would assign a score to it because okay. there's even a range of values that each of this score, this recency of frequency score, belongs okay. to. Yes, okay. uh, when, when we go further in the class, we we'll understand your okay. question better. Okay, okay, thank yes. you very much. Thank you. All right, thank you, Yomi. Yes. Okay, so let's calculate the monetary value. Um, so these are just my own formula. I'm sure there are other formulas that people would use, and it's very dependent on your data set. So you just have to think through your data set, what, what will work for you. So this is what works for my data set. I'm sure that there are more complex formulas that you have to add filters, selected, blah, 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 those kind of measures. But because my data set is pretty simple, I don't have to do so much complex DAX formulas. 
So my monetary value, I'm going to write a variable called total sales, calculate my total sales. My total sales is my sum of my sales amounts. Then I'll write another variable called the total quantity because I said that my monetary value is my sales versus on, on um, over quantity. Okay, so then sum of quantity. So returning and dividing my total sales. So that is my monetary value. So um, after doing this, I want to create a table called my RFM table. This is the table I would use to assign my recency, frequency, and monetary score. So for my RFM table, I just want it to give me the unique customer list because the other cost, the other table that's my scanner table has a list of all the customers and the number of times they have come. So a customer can appear more than once on that table. But for this table, I don't want a customer to appear more than once on this table. So I'm going to be creating a new table. And I'll be calling it RFM table. So for this table, it's going to be, I'm going to use summarize function. So I'm summarizing my scan data table, that's my table. And I want it to group by customer ID. And then it's on my R value. Efficiency. Oh, sorry. Show me my function. Um, I think there's something wrong with my function. Okay. Just give me some minutes. Let me figure this out. Sorry guys. Sensi value. My frequency value. And my monetary value. Okay. I've created my new table. So after creating my new table, let's go and see how the table looks like. So this is the recency value. The reason why the recency value is high is because we're doing it against today's date. So long time, there are lots of days between 2016 and today. My frequency value, this 
customer's frequency value is one. So he has come only one time to the store and has spent only six Naira 75 Kobo. Yeah. So I want to create a new table called the recency score. Sorry, a new column. I'm going to create a new column to assign the score for the recency, the frequency, and the monetary. We've already gotten their values. Now we want to give them the score. And for this, we are going to be using a switch statement to assign that. So I'm going to do a new column. So for my recency score, switch. So um, so calculate our recency, frequency, and monetary score. We're going to be using the percentile to get the value. We're going to be using the 20th, the 40th, the 60th, and the 80th percentile. For some people, they just use 25th, 50th, and 75th percentile. It just depends on your preference and your business needs. But for me, I'm going to be using 20th, 40th, 60th, and 80th percentile to get my RFM values. So for my um, recency value, you're going to return through then let's go. So if my recency value is less than or equals to using the percentile function. Then is that a question? Uh, yeah, so is it like you're giving them, or um, you're putting them in, or um, they're putting in categories? Yes, put in your categories. Customers in categories. Yes, I want to put them okay. in categories. I'm using the percentile value to categorize them. There is there. Okay, yes. so maybe those that have not purchased for the past 30 days, so we put them on this category. Those that purchase, yes. yeah, we'll call them. Okay, so there's another question. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, they mean, they mean now. Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah. Bukola. Yes, because I want to ask. I want to ask. This is scoring that you are giving. Is it just general, or is it um, limited to your business kind? For example, um, like a, uh, maybe a store looks at a customer that is has not come between the last one month. Like it looks at it based on month, or will it just use percentile or true, both arrow F and M, or based on your business value, like. What's your, your, your business rule per se? Because different businesses have different ways of categorizing who is an in, in, inactive customer or active. Business A might say, oh, if you've not come in 30 days, you are not active. Another business might say, if you've not come in 30 days, you are inactive. But if you are using just percentile, I want to just book all customers the same way. Okay, so I, as I mentioned earlier, that it is very particular to your business needs. It's not, there's no specific way of doing it. It's just what your business requires of you to do that you would do. So if your, your business says, so, so for some customers now, your recency is like now, now, now. While some people, recency could be as long as a year. So it depends on your business needs. That is how you are going to calculate your RFM scores. Oh, all right. Okay, thank, yes. you. thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Okay. Please, just to let us know that um, I think we are interrupting her too much so that it will not be that we'll be rushing for time. Note your question, put them in the chat box if you think you will forget. So maybe when she's like done, then we can ask her all the questions. You know, for adventure, maybe what you want to ask is what she was, she's going to do in the future. I hope that's okay by you. Okay, all right. Thank you. Okay, so let me just write the formula for the percentiles I'm using. My 20th percentile. Oh, just to note that five is the highest and one is the lowest when you are doing your RFM analysis. I think I'll just copy this. I don't have to write it again.
I'm going to do this for the other ones too. I hope you can still hear me. Um, yes, okay. 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 I'm also doing it for the F value. Okay, sure. Oh, this frequency is cool. And then the last is the monetary score. So we have our recency score, frequency score, and monetary score. So now we are going to concatenate all three together as our RFM score. I'm going to create a new column that concatenates all three columns. So RFM. So now we have our RFM score here, yeah, concatenate all three columns. So um, now we want to define our criteria for each of these, our score, how we have segmented the customer base on their RFM score. So I have a table that does that. Let me just import the table so that we can have a look at it. Okay, so this is our customers and their score. Let's just take a look at the table. So for customers that are about to sleep, they have a recency score between two and three. They have a frequency score between one, two, three, four, and five. Oh, their recency score is, sorry, their frequency score is one to five. Their recency score is two and three. And their monetary score is between one, two, and three. So this is the table I'm using. As I said, it is very different for different businesses. 
So you can have how you want to score your customers and then place them into different categories. So this is how we want to score these customers. Are about to sleep. And like, so I want to create a relationship between this segment table and this course table. So I'll just create a relationship between this from the RFM value. Yeah. So it's a many to many relationship. And there we have it. So you can see your customers. And the segment they belong to. Oh, okay, there's no relationship between those two tables. Let me just create the relationship here. Yeah. Uh, relationship So now we can see that customer one is at risk. We're at risk of losing customer one. Customer 10 is a lost customer already. Customer 1009 at risk. Let me just increase the size of this. Sorry, I think this is more visible now. So we've been able to segment our customers based on the RFM scores that we have given them. So customer one is a one five two, and it is at risk. If we come to our table here, and see that customer one belongs to one five two here, at risk and just. So on our lookup table, which is our segment score table, in this case, the lookup table at risk is 152, and our customer one belongs to that RFM category. So you already know that customer one is at risk. So that is basically RFM analysis. I think I can take questions now. Okay. Yes. Um. Right, so, um, are there any questions? I think there were a lot of questions before. No, oh, okay. No. So, any questions? Mm. Oh, everybody's quiet now. No, okay, yeah, there's a question. Okay, Yomi has okay, a question. Okay, there's a question. Yomi has a question. Yes, please. I wanted to go back. You know that when you are using your percentile to compute yes. for each of them, yes. So, you know, you said there are different, there are other ways you could use, but you decided to use percentile, right? Oh, I'm only familiar yeah. with the percentile way, but I know that okay. there are other ways to use okay. it. Yes. Okay. But I think percentile is better because from statistics, it just helps you group the customers into different percentile. Okay. And another way. So you can just say, okay, from this percentile, I, you know, I, I also mentioned that some people use 25 percentile. Percent, percent yes. Out. So of that part, of whatever scores you have, you want to yes. put your customers in different percentile and use yes. that percentile to segment, to segment the them. customers. So I think it is better that way because for now, my recency values as at 2016 to now, that's the yeah, okay. time. Time, yes. And that's like four years. So what is yes. recent, my most recent customer should be two months. I already have four okay. years there. Yes. Yeah. It's better to okay. use the percentile because it or it works with your data frame. What you have. Your, your data, data frame. Okay. Yes. 
Okay, it helps you to just um, do that part so that you don't have to worry about that segmentation. Just segment works with your current yes. data set. Then just yeah, so you can now decide that instead of 20, 40, 60 percent, you can do 10, 30, however percentile you feel based on your business needs. We are the one that would decide as an analyst what will work for my business. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So are you also saying that if you use different um different uh, metrics, different ways to compute it, that it's possible you arrive at is it is it that you're going to be able to arrive at the same conclusion? Or you'll be getting different conclusions there. Um, you would arrive at almost the same conclusion, very um, close, as long as you are the one that will define your terms. Your you terms. Arrive at very close. Com, com. If, if you do, if I do twenty percent out and use twenty five percent, there there are possibility that customers between twenty and twenty five percent out would have the same RFM score, of score. very closely RFM scores. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. And then the other, you know, the way you concatenated it, you, you follow the same order of the RFM. I think, is there a logic to it? Why does it have to be RFM? Why can't it be FRM, like frequency first? And is there like a logic to why it starts with the recency? Then is there, is there like an hierarchy? Oh, yes, it's the hierarchy. It's recency first, frequency, okay. then monetary. That is why it's called RFM, not okay. FM. Is it that recency is the most important? In this case, yes, in this case, it is most important. It's okay. not that it's the most important, but for like the formula, you know, there are some formulas mm. that there's the way it goes. So it doesn't mean okay. the first one that comes is the most important, but that's how okay. the formula is. Yes, okay, okay. But okay. okay. if you use okay. your frequency recent first or your recent mm. first universally, RFM uh. is the accepted. So if you decide to okay. somebody else might not understand what understand. You have. Yes, and okay. to give you different answer. It won't, it won't answer. be right. Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're for welcome. Your Thank you for your question. Okay. Does yes. anyone have any other question? Yeah, any other question? I have questions, though. Okay, Zainma has a okay. question. Yes, yes. So I have a question. So, what if a situation where please hold on? Okay. 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 So, what if in a situation where a business places more value on one of these metric than the other? For example, yeah. maybe a business um thinks that recency is more important to them than how much. We are bringing to their business. In that case, now will the scoring change, or will it still be the same percentile we are using for both recency, frequency, or monitoring? Or do we need to like track the scoring um, um, pattern? Okay, for that one, what would change is your segmentation, not the scoring. Not as, as I said, the percentile is very dependent on you. But for you to segment that customer based on the RFM you've got in, it is your segment that will change. So, for example, if you place, if you don't place as much value on recency, if your recency is between zero and one, in this case, my recency of zero and one is at risk. In your own case, for customers that have low recency and maybe you place more value on frequency and monetary, you won't segment them as at risk. You segment them as probably high value customer because that's how you place them in your segmentation. So it has a lot to do with your segmentation and your scores. But for the scoring, you still have to segment them based on, as I said, I'm only familiar with the percentile. So if you have any other method you want to use to segment them to get your score, other method you can use it. But for the percentile, 20 to 30 percent percentile, that sort of thing. To get the score, you would still need the same formula to get the score. What would be different is the segment you're assigning to the RFM scores. I hope that answers your question. You answered. Ah, oh, yes, that, yes, yes, that's that, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other question? Any other questions? Okay. Oh, we don't know the questions then. Um, oh, actually. You have some questions of what's for you to tell us uh, about your journey so far. Okay. 
Okay, so. And thank you for the presentation. It was actually oh. really insightful. Thank you for having me. Um, so my name is Olubukun Lakinshola, as you all know. I started my journey in 2020 before the pandemic. Um, prior to when I was, I um, before my data analysis journey, I was a customer happiness executive with Principle Limited. Um, so I started my journey because I was tired of customer service and that I just wanted to do something else. I tried my hand on a lot of other things that did not work well, and I just stumbled, stumbled upon data analysis. And while learning data analysis, there was this off and on moment for me I would, because work was tasking and I had some school exams and all of those stuff. So I would just go off and go on. And there was some, there's something about me. I, I, I tend not to be a finisher. I start something and leave it halfway then go and start another thing. That's the kind of person I am. But for data analysis, by the time I left it, and I left it like August of last year, I think. By the time I left it, there was just this urge to continue, like just continue, just continue. I didn't have it for all of other, all the other things I have started, but I did have it for data analysis and I continued and there was this opportunity for the Microsoft Leap Apprenticeship. I applied and when I applied, I, I'm not one of those people that, it was not one of those things that I would apply for and go and sleep. It was one of those things that I really wanted, like I wanted it. I even told some of my friends that we're not even into data analysis to apply. And there was a time I would think, oh, what if someone of this, my friend that I told, gets in and I don't get in? I'll be happy for them, but I'll feel bad because I was the one that really wanted this, that kind of stuff. So I really, really did want it. And fortunately for me, I got in, and that's how my data analysis journey started, work journey. Um, it was a four-month apprenticeship. After the four months, we, it was in collaboration with um, Rugby Business Solutions. That's the company I work with. So after the four months, Rugby retained us as an um, associate data consultant. And that is how I got here today. Thank you. Thank you. So well, how was the program? The, oh, the program was okay. good. Oh, was, but today, OK. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, I think I should, I, should, I should just talk a bit about the program so that for people that want to apply in the future, okay. just briefly, okay. it is a female-only cohort organized by Microsoft and in collaboration with Rugby. Microsoft also, for this one, it was only female-only and it was the first data analysis cohort they had. Microsoft does it with different companies, for, but for this one, it was with Rugby and it is four months. You have one month of classroom training and then the remaining three months is on the job experience. Mostly you're working with the company that uh, Microsoft is collaborating with and not Microsoft, but you have Microsoft trainers train you and then you get mentorship from Microsoft staff members all over the world. Yeah, so that's it. Mm. So there are also programs on other courses besides oh, data yeah. analysis? Yes, yes they, they do. They have for software engineers, they have DevOps, and some other ones. Okay. Yeah. Um, then what we give to those that want to start out? Those that uh, want to, like what advice we give to those starting out? Uh, my advice is that, uh, I want to say you should first make sure it's something you want to do because I don't think I knew it was something I wanted to do. I just, I yes. just like, stumbled upon it and I tried it. So if it's okay if you're not sure if it's what you want to do. It's okay if you drop it along the way, it's fine. Everybody will end up finding what they want to do at the end of the day. So it's okay if you are tired, if it seems like everything is not going fine, it's okay to take a break. It's okay to even fail in it. It's okay to have all of those things. At the end of the day, I feel that everything will work out. But one major advice I want to give is there's one word that one of my colleagues mentioned one time she said when preparation meets opportunity there's nothing that can stop you and it is actually true so if you know that you want to achieve something i think you should put in the work i'm a believer of putting in the work whatever i feel that i have achieved today i feel that at one point in my life i have put in the work to be there so prepare yourself put in the work and when it is time for 
when the, the right time at the right opportunity presents itself, I'm sure that you'll be prepared enough to get it. Thank you. You're welcome. So, like I mentioned earlier, the um, Power BI Learning Community is sponsored by Enterprise DNA and they are giving out free memberships. So, um, Ricola will grace us by asking a question or maybe a tax, it could be anything. So, we'll pick a winner for today's session. Okay. I'm going to ask a very, because it's hard to ask regular questions, everybody might know it. So, I'm going to ask a very um, question that you probably will not see coming. So. Um, I, 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 I group my customers into different segments. And one of these segments is hibernating customers. And I also group them into champions. Can somebody just explain briefly who hibernating customers are and who the champions are? So if I can pick where I'm going to be answering. Okay. Person okay, no, uh, anybody can answer. So first person to actually answer on the shot. Yes, that's so that, yes, that's why we that, come in. Okay, right. so we have hibernating and champions. So just let me know who hibernating. We have over 18 people here. I didn't hear some people's voice. We actually have close to 29 people right right now. Yes, yeah, so I didn't hear a lot of people's voice. Yeah. I, I really do hope that everybody followed. I Follow. really do hope that everybody did follow. Oh, if maybe yes, yeah, someone mentioned that he came okay. late. Uh, so uh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, on, okay, I, I, I want to respond. Okay, are you? Uh, okay, just want, to, want, just want to reply that we are really following. Oh, so, you know, uh, not all of us are at the same level on Power BI and uh, oh, okay. some of this. So, um, uh, a learner here who is also like you who wants to switch to something relating to data IT stuff yeah. and I, I really enjoy the exposition. I've actually done Power BI to a great ex to some extent but this one is a challenge for me to also look up to or consider something I can work on or adapt into some of the things I'm working on presently. So I really appreciate the exposition. And Mr. Michael, thank you for this opportunity. You're welcome. You, Aya. All right. Okay, Aya, I just wanted to say that you can actually reach out to me after this class. I'll be happy to help you through your journey. I will definitely. Perhaps if I can get your contact. <laughs> oh, I'll be dropping my LinkedIn and my email address. Okay. If I has dropped it in the comment section, so you can just Reach out to me. I'm so happy to oh, okay. help. All right. Okay, there's somebody raising their hands. Just to clarify, if it's for the answering of the question for the gifts, the only fair thing is the we are only going to take people who type in the chat box, and our special guest, Bukola, we just like the correct answer. So okay, it, so we're doing chat box. Okay, that's nice. For, for the award, or if any other thing, anybody can talk about that. But if you answer by voice, apologies, we will not be picked up. We want it to be a bit more transparent that it's not like two people now type and answer by voice at the same time. Okay. So I can give like the next one minute to the first person that answers. Who are hibernating customers and who are champions in the customer segmentation. Nobody is answering me. Okay. Oh, Baba Sunday had a question. Oh, okay, Baba Sunday. I've seen Baba Sunday's message. Champion, okay, so high value customer that you don't want to don't lose. Want to lose. And okay, then are yours the answer? Customers who are not acting, that's hibernating. Okay. Okay. Well, it's just us are both. Yes. Both. So I'm going to give the next two minutes so that we can just round up. 
once it's seven or seven, I'll be done receiving my answer. So if you have questions for me while you're typing in your answers, you can just let me know. We have one minute left at the end of this answer session. Okay. Two. Less than thirty seconds. <laughs> oh, okay. Time up. Time up. Um, so Babat Sunday said champion customers, high value customers, we don't want to lose. We don't want to lose any of our customers, but yeah, high value customers we don't want to lose. Um, customers who are not active, that's for hibernating. Okay. Champions buy often, okay. Okay, champions high monetary. Yeah. Oh, okay. Who are hibernating customer high value customer? Hibernating last purchase was a long time ago. Okay. That's then answer replied for okay champions and hibernating. Yomi replied customers who have slept for hibernating they purchased a while back. Okay, so I think that this is a lot of confusing. Yeah, I, I won't accept Babati this champion because he just said high value. High value what? The monetary value, frequency value. So I won't, it's very vague. Champions who are not active. Active could be um, monetary frequency. So I'm going to take answers, answer for champions. Um, so let me see if answer, answer the other one will. So I think that I'll take answers, answer. Yeah, can you suppose like the, okay. the one you Okay, yeah, I won't do mistake. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, sorry, yeah. I like the wrong one. Okay, you can like and like the right one then. Oh my goodness, what am I doing? Yes, yeah, so I have answer was the first person to get the answer right based on the using the terms recent frequencies. Answer was not very big for answer. Yeah, Mr. Joseph, thanks for winning our prize today. You just have to email us. I think it's been your Your visa has come. Okay, you've also typed. So, um, we thank you for today's session. Like, very thank you for today's session. It was actually very, very insightful. Especially in business world. Thank you. I would like to come again, though. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would, would definitely I invite you. It more DG referrals, though, because sometimes it looks like we don't have gender balance on this hour. <laughs> oh, oh, December is. Oh, I think December, all our speakers are actually female. And okay. next week, also having. Next week, um, um, was having another female speaker, and she's supposed to talk to us about uh, Microsoft Teams. Oh, okay. okay. So, I, I would like to join that. That's fine. Yeah. So she said that actually, more, like Teams is way more than just video conferencing. I way more to Teams than just a video yeah. conference. So she will tell us all about that next week. Oh, I'll be happy to join but, that. Yeah, so it's the same time, the same link. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So also to. Uh, we can do for the nearest available slot too, so that we can have a Bukola come back. So, okay, so okay, we got a message about this is that we actually our speakers at the end of the year. Oh, so, that's right. I guess, to this yeah, year, but, so whenever, whenever. So January, January, you can come back again and listen. But I have 
or if anybody cancels. But and you know, if she wants to do Excel, I don't know if she. Oh yeah, this is a, yeah, this is an Excel session. If you also do Excel, well, I could set up one. Is that okay? Oh, I'll message you and we'll talk. Okay. So, um, Ferry, I can see that Ahmed Oyelowo is here. I just want to say shout out to him. He was a big part of my Power BI journey. Really, really big part of it. So, shout out to Ahmed. He's one of the Jagabas. I, <laughs> I hope he's hearing me, Sha. He yes. helped me through and through my Power BI. I can hear you. I'm very happy. Hi, Ahmed. <laughs> Hello, Carla. I'm so happy I had to join the session today. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks. so happy with the journey so far. Excellent. I'm really glad. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm going to come to learn from you soon. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you. What you are doing, you know, I met everybody's, uh, you're seeing the, 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 the fruits of your labor, or what's the what to use now? And so uh, I think um, we can hope, right? Yeah, so um, thank you again. Uh, thank everybody for taking the time to call and thank you once again for an amazing session. All right, thank you, Ifani and Michael. Okay. Bye. Have Bye. a very wonderful week ahead. Thank you. You too. I remember to rest, though. Don't go work yourself. Yes, very good. Bye. Bye.